Hello, and welcome to this year's Schweitzer Celebration of Service, where we gather to celebrate the work and the learning of the 2019-2020 Schweitzer Fellows. The Schweitzer Fellowship is an interdisciplinary direct service year for selected graduate students who work within communities to mitigate the health disparities and to promote equity. My name is Maya Bauer. I'm the director of the program, um, and our program is located at Health and Medicine Policy Research Group, which is a nonprofit think tank in downtown Chicago. It's been my true honor to work with this dedicated, compassionate, and determined group of graduate students. I remain continually inspired by your trepidation, your growth, and your knowledge. This program equips you to build a better future of service, providership, and care. We work with a focus on equity and systems change to address the root causes of inequity while showing up to mitigate their impacts um, in communities around Chicagoland. Our interdisciplinary approach is crucial for transforming our world as we see plainly now more than ever. You are the future of health and care, and I am certain that we are in good hands. During this program, uh, this video, we have the opportunity to hear from the fellows themselves in their own words about their experiences, um, both in their projects and in this program. And we also have the great honor of inviting some other special guests to share with us. So we'll start out with a group of fellows and then we'll hear from Margie Shapps, who is the Executive Director of Health and Medicine Policy Research Group. Hi, this is Jasmine Salona. I'm M2, kind of M3 student at University of Illinois at Chicago studying medicine. Um, I'm coming to you from Racine, Wisconsin, where I came to do my dedicated study for the board exam and I've been here ever since for this quarantine, pandemic, this global crisis we're experiencing. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy and doing whatever they can to bolster this interesting time. And I'm sure all of you are coming up with really creative ways to stay sane and in tune with the rest of the world. I just did a yoga class on the balcony, which was really fun. And I haven't done yoga in a while, so it's kind of bringing me back to the way it used to be. Um, so my project was A Dash of Soul Food. It was a project in which we did cooking demonstrations, nutrition information, all ways to lower your blood pressure. The project site was at Deborah's Place, which has two locations, one in East Garfield Park, um, which is on the west side of Chicago, and in the Old Town neighborhood. Um, I'd say the project was very successful. Um, overall, we had more than 50 participants over the course of the year, and the tangible outcome is a cookbook, which I'm really excited about, uh, coming to an Amazon near you. I'll let you guys all know when that's ready. So now I'm finishing up the cookbook, and I have more time than I could have ever imagined to do so, so I'm hoping that it'll turn out really well. Uh, hope to see you all soon, and good luck! Hello, my name is Josie Needs, and I'm a nursing student at Rush University. This year, I completed my Schweitzer Fellowship project with Little Brothers Friends of the Elderly. My project focused on intergenerational programming to connect elders at risk of social isolation with school-age children. The purpose of this project was twofold. One, it gave the elders an opportunity to volunteer with the activities with the children. In addition, the project worked to improve attitudes towards aging among the children and the elders alike. Throughout the school year, about 30 elders and over 150 school-aged youth gathered for a variety of activities, including bingo game days, designing a mural, creating artwork together, and discussing favorite memories. At one of the intergenerational events, I joined a table with an elder and eight students. I listened as everyone at the table found commonalities about what they enjoyed to do during the summer. 
The students were intrigued to learn that the elder goes dancing at Millennium Park every week during the summer. She even takes a friend. The students insisted that the elder draw an image of her and her friend dancing on the poster we were creating together. Working with little brothers and the elders and the school children has been an absolute honor and something I hope to continue and expand in the future. My name is Sierra Bear. I am a current nursing student at Rush University. My fellowship site is the Women's Cook County Jail in Chicago, Illinois. I work with a recidivism program called Thrive that looks to empower women who are looking to co recover from substance abuse, domestic violence, and trauma. With that, I have rolled out an initiative that was originally supposed to help the women um, with, the, with writing, where they would write about their experiences in terms of how they can make better choices, how they can uh, get through the trauma that they have faced. But I quickly found out that that wasn't what they wanted or needed. Instead, they wanted me to facilitate groups and discuss certain topics that will help them see where they have went wrong and give them a safe space where they can talk, talk freely for the first time. One of the biggest things that I found out or the biggest things that this experience have taught me is that my voice is powerful. For the first time ever, I was able to really utilize my voice that to impact lives. I did this for a year straight and it was a life changing experience. One of the, some of the things that I have found or some of the things that I have learned is that these women are tenacious, they are powerful women and they are looking for a second chance. They are eager to make a difference. Um, some of the stories that I would like to share briefly is at the end of the program, I, would, I was able to kind of take a step back and allow the women to come up and facilitate the groups without me even having to put much effort into it or talk much. They were eager to come up and be in a way a counselor to each other. So those are some great moments. And then also as they look to leave the program, I can really tell if they were ready to recover what they have lost. They were eager. They would talk to me about their due dates as they were um, leaving the three month program. So these moments really made me proud because I felt like, yeah, they got it. They were ready to move on and they were ready to re-enter into the lives outside of jail. With that, I would like to thank Swarsa. I would like to thank the fellowship itself, Maya and Karen. I would like to thank my site mentors, Lisette and Joanne for supporting me along the way at the, at the Cook County Jail. And I would like to thank my academic advisor, Dr. Monique Reed. All of you all have supported me along the way and I appreciate your feedback. I definitely realized at this moment as it comes to an end that this opportunity was nothing like I've ever experienced before. It was lifelong, it was lasting, and it uh, taught me so many things. So I will remember this moment forever and I appreciate your support. Hi everyone, my name is Andrea Nafosa and I'm with Loyola University. I'm doing my MS in dietetics. For this fellowship, I partnered with Near North Health Service Corporation and BUILD to increase the exposure of farmers, nutrition, and locally farmed produce to the Chicago community. I started teaching the youth at their after-school programs on nutrition, culinary, and hydroponics, which of course all had a sustainability focus. I also initiated interactive garden events and learning activities for WIC participants that also helped me create a strong community garden relationship between Near North's WIC clinics throughout Chicago and the organization Chicago Light that does a lot of farming after school programs uh, throughout Chicago. With this fellowship, I realized that I got to do many other events that weren't planned, such as doing yoga classes, one-on-one -on -one mentoring with Cortez, that's up in the left-hand side corner of a picture of me and Hib, doing some hydroponics at Build. Uh, I also did pregnancy nutrition workshops because my master's focus is doing uh, nutrition and the lack of nutrition educations in the pregnancy prenatal care. And I also did 
a great working with the staff members at Near North and Built, where I got a lot of the families to start growing their own food inside their very own homes. So needless to say, the fellowship brought me closer to my community. I met many other fellows who are just as weird as me. While I also got to slam some poetry with high schoolers, I watched first graders try tomatoes for the first time. I loved their faces. Uh, I did Zumba with kindergartners. And finally, the most recent thing was that I was able to Zoom live with families of the staff members that work at Near North who are currently growing lettuce or tomatoes inside their very own homes during this COVID-19 pandemic. So super fun. Everything was priceless to me. Learned many things. Thank you guys. I had the great pleasure of completing my Schweitzer project with Heartland Alliance's Marjorie Kolber Center. The Kolber Center is a wonderful organization that serves immigrants from all over the world who have survived politically sanctioned torture. My Schweitzer project focused on improving the well-being through the umbrella theme of wellness of the population that the Kolber Center serves. Under this umbrella came three different components. One was physical health, Second was mental health, and third was economic the sessions health. that I conducted um, focused on not only the client's goals, but also um, adopting the perspective, ad adopting an attitude of self-reliance so that if the client needed to use the skill in the future again, they wouldn't necessarily need um, an advocate or someone assisting them with that same skill. I'm happy to report some of the following successes that our clients had. Um, one of them was getting into college from not knowing how to navigate uh, the college application system. Um, others were um, organizing cooking group sessions together where clients learned about different um, cultures, different uh, foods from different cuisines, um, and not only that, but also understanding nutritional value under the context of different um, cuisines. Overall, like any service project, I feel like I received a lot more from this project than I feel like I could give to it. I learned so much from the clients about resilience, about hard work, about being grateful for the privileges that I've had in my life. And um, it was an opportunity for me to renew my purpose, which is to use my privileges for the betterment of society. And again, I thank Schweitzer for the opportunity for me to undertake this service project um, I could not be more grateful. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Deborah Rose. I am a fourth. Hello, everyone. My name is Deborah Rose. I am a fourth year medical student at Loyola University Chicago Stritch School of Medicine. My project was at the Edward Hines VA Hospital in Hines, Illinois, through the Addiction Treatment Program, which serves individuals who struggle with addiction and chronic substance use. One in 10 Americans over the age of 12 struggle with addiction to drugs and or alcohol. Addiction is a disease of multifactorial etiology and including genetic predisposition and environmental exposure to alcohol and or other substances. It is especially important to raise awareness about this issue and strive to enact change in light of our nation's growing opioid epidemic. Drug overdose is now the leading cause of death for Americans under the age of 50, killing more people than guns or car accidents at a rate that's higher than the HIV epidemic at its peak. I participated in wellness and whole health substance use disorder workshops through the addiction treatment program at the Edward Hines VA Hospital and our collaborators across the city. I also worked with counselors to lead wellness workshops on topics such as managing stress, um, smoking cessation, goal setting, etc. And I also engaged in a story capturing initiative to empathetically listen to and document the stories of 
individuals who have suffered from addiction, an experience that has been cathartic for the storyteller and profoundly eye-opening for the listener. This experience of direct face-to-face communication um, and community engagement with a vulnerable patient population has been invaluable and paramount in my growth as a physician in training. I'm grateful for this opportunity to have led a project to empathetically serve and holistically care for individuals in the greater Chicago area who are struggling with the chronic disease of addiction. Thank you. Thank you so much to our first cohort of fellows who got to speak with us tonight. Um, now we get the opportunity to hear from Margie Shapps. Margie is the Executive Director of Health and Medicine Policy Research Group, and she helped to bring the Schweitzer Fellowship to Chicago some 24 years ago. Um, she has some really important insight and some reflections to share with you tonight. Good evening, everybody. I'm Margie Schaaf, the Executive Director of Health and Medicine Policy Research Group. It's truly a pleasure for me to say a few words to all of you tonight in this most different of ways to mark the end of a fellowship year. But these are not normal times, and so we adjust and we deepen our commitments. Congratulations to all of you, the Schweitzer Fellows of 2019-2020. Tonight, you become Fellows for Life and join the over 600 Chicago Fellows who have completed this program since 1996. And from where I sit, I can honestly say we've never needed social justice, equity-focused health professionals more than we do at this moment in history. I'd like you each to close your eyes for a moment. Think about how you've changed over this year of your fellowship, how the fellowship and the other fellows have changed you and how the world has changed over this year. I encourage you to use that moment of quiet as a launching pad for you to think more deeply in the near future about how you've changed and what the impact of this program has been for you. Think about the boulders you've encountered and the tools you've acquired to get past those boulders. No doubt you've had a struggle or two with your site or your mentor or a colleague, or juggling the fellowship with your academic demands. How have you overcome those boulders? Don't lose the tools you've gained. They're part of what you acquire through your life and can be pulled from the toolbox as you need them again and again, and you will need them again and again. When we began, when we began the program in 1996, there were four fellowship programs in the country. And frankly, we had to think hard about whether this was a good fit for health and medicine. We were, after all, a policy think tank, and this was a direct service, service learning program. As we thought about how to proceed, we realized what a remarkable opportunity we had. We could influence the next generation of healthcare professionals to understand equity and social justice as principles that could influence their worldview and their practice. And by so doing, we could help foster a generation of health professionals who integrated the social determinants of health into interdisciplinary collaboration to support the health of individuals and communities. We could empower health profession students to influence policy within their institutions, locally, statewide, and nationally to be more equitable and supportive of those who are most marginalized and we could inform our policy efforts at Health and Medicine with the on-the-ground experiences of the fellows. Win-win, and indeed it has been for 23 years. The public health crisis and challenge we're facing right now is truly unlike anything we've faced since the 1918 flu pandemic. We've had serious crises in my, health, in my lifetime, polio, HIV, AIDS, H1N1, Ebola, all incredibly challenging and serious, but nothing like this international pandemic. More than 160 countries, millions affected, over 100,000 dead, and no vaccine in clear sight. And here in our country, we're seeing in stark relief 
the defunding of public health, the CDC, local and state health departments, laboratories, and our healthcare workforce. And we're seeing the disinvestment in poor communities show itself in the extraordinary disparity in who's getting sick and dying from the coronavirus. African Americans here in Chicago are seven times more likely to be infected than whites. The shortages of healthcare workers are becoming more clear as we try to staff new facilities to take care of those infected and have pay wars and competition for the limited workforce we have. We don't have testing available to the broader community, so we can't trace contacts of people who may be carrying the virus, but don't yet have symptoms and are infecting others. Many of you have had opportunities to address the struggles that our most vulnerable face in accessing healthcare in accessing support to, for children to succeed in school, in accessing linguistically compatible services, in accessing healthy food, and in being housing insecure. <coughs> you have seen the sacrifices families make by not taking their medications so they can pay for food for their children, and the healthcare visits they forego because of immigration status or because of a copay they cannot pay. You have been foisted into the middle of all of this and you have gained skills and colleagues who will help you champion solutions. You were each chosen to be part of this program because you showed your potential for leadership and problem solving. You have honed these skills over the year under extreme stress. You have learned that being nimble and able to refocus your work is part of life, and we look forward to watching how each of you, as Albert Schweitzer said, makes your life your argument. Good luck to all of you. Thank you, Margie. Now we have the opportunity to hear from our next group of 2019-2020 Schweitzer Fellows in their own words about their projects and their fellowship experiences. I'm Samantha Nell, and I'm a third year doctoral student within DePaul University's Clinical Psychology PhD program. So for my project, I worked in collaboration with the Rohingya Culture Center to really work towards developing a home-based English literacy program for newly resettled Rohingya refugees within Chicago, um, just due to a lot of historic oppression and denial of access to basic liberties such as education. Um, a lot of the community members here have really low um, literacy rates and most don't speak English. Um, so to really kind of work to address some of the barriers around um, accessing ESL classes, we wanted to make sure that we were having home-based sessions um, and that the tutors that we were training to deliver these skills would also be able to work either one-on-one -on -one or in small groups with community members. So in addition to these tutoring sessions that happen on a weekly basis, we also had periodic kind of workshops that were really meant to develop or further develop um, skills that the tutors had already learned, um, just to make sure that they were feeling comfortable with delivering these um, skills and kind of bringing up any concerns that came on along the way. Um, and that was really helpful to kind of make iterative changes to the program. We also had language cafe events that were a time for a kind of mutual engagement and learning about um, cultures across both community members, um, program staff, and tutors. Um, this was also a really good time to just practice those skills that students had learned within their tutoring sessions and to just normalize the process of kind of making mistakes and practicing and um, just getting comfortable with each other, um, building that sense of community. Um, so this has been a really wonderful experience for me. I've really enjoyed getting to know people more in the community and kind of just learning more about the importance of being flexible and responsive and really patience um, and the need for being consistent and persevering even when obstacles have come up. Um, everyone's really worked together to kind of make sure that the needs um, of the community members were being addressed and voice concerns were also being addressed and um, I really look forward to seeing what happens in the future of this program as it continues to evolve over the coming months. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Teresa Polkowski, and I'm a second year medical student at Loyola Stritch School of Medicine in Chicago. Through Refugee One, I had the pleasure of working closely with the family to provide support and to address unmet health needs. My project involved weekly home visits, accompanying the family to medical appointments, connecting the family to food pantries, providing psychosocial support during emergencies, and serving as a liaison between the family and case managers at Refugee One. I also assisted the mother with finding full-time work, locating legal services, and ensuring that she receives the proper diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up care for a serious medical condition. My favorite part about working with this family has been the moments when I've been inspired by this mother's resilience, kindness, and extraordinary commitment to her children. Regardless of the setbacks that we experienced together, she never gave up on herself. Her fierce optimism amid impossible situations has taught me how important it is to approach difficult situations with positivity, intention, and thoughtfulness. While her circumstances have not gotten easier, she has developed confidence in her ability to handle challenges, to speak up for her family, and to take care of herself. In the future, I'd like to continue creating opportunities for people to realize how strong they are. To end, I would like to thank Maya, Karen, Becky, Olivia, Kelly, Helen, and Dr. Hatchett for their consistent support and encouragement. I am very grateful for the Schweitzer Fellowship, which granted me this life-changing opportunity to serve. And finally, I'd like to thank my parents and my friends, Leah, Emily, Jenny, and Alex, who consistently checked in with me throughout this entire process. Hello, my name is Daniel and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Chicago Pritzker School of Medicine. Uh, for this fellowship, I volunteered my time at the HANA Center in Irving Park, which is a nonprofit organization that strives to empower immigrant and multi-ethnic communities through social services and organizing. I had a transformative experience working with my site mentor, William, through the Youth Empowerment Program. Last summer in this academic year, I helped start a special group called Committed Against Patriarchy, or CAP, is a safe space for young men of color to explore gender identity, how we can support women in our communities, how we can act as peer educators on issues of consent and healthy relationships, and how we can unpack our own trauma through discussions, workshops, storytelling, and one-on-one -on -one mentorships. The main outcome for my project was that 100% of participants reported that the group sessions were the first time they felt safe enough to discuss challenges with regards to their gender identity and to unpack the negative experiences they have faced, such as being racially profiled or misjudged by teachers and counselors. I'm grateful to my group members for welcoming me, a complete newcomer who comes from a privileged background as a medical student into their space, which many see as a second home. I feel lucky enough to have met such strong individuals who are deeply rooted in their community and their relationships with one another. One thing I'll always take away is when a member named Yale told me it seemed like I was always at HANA Center from the beginning. This experience really made me realize that if I weren't studying to become a physician, I would be a social worker. Even though the fellowship year is finishing up, I plan on maintaining a close relationship with Hana as I will continue helping run these CAP meetings. I really thank all of you for making this fellowship experience so memorable and formative. I really learned a lot about community health in ways that I could not have by just simply sitting in a medical school classroom, such as listening to your powerful anecdotes during monthly meetings and reading all the resources that you graciously put in the group meet. Also, a huge thank you to Maya for such strong leadership this year and to help make Schweitzer a defining part of my medical training. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sydney Hi, Ehrlich. Ehrlich. And I'm Maggie Bridger, and we're graduate students at the University of Illinois at Chicago in the Department of Disability and Human Development. Maggie and I partnered at Access Living, which is Chicago's Center for Independent Living. 
Access Living is a center for service, advocacy, and social change for people with disabilities, led and run by people with disabilities. Our project falls under Access Living's Disability Arts and Culture Project. For our project, we developed and delivered a series of inclusive creative movement workshops for children and adults with disabilities at Access Living. The workshops focused on developing an artistic voice and perspective, as well as providing a safe space to explore different forms of movement and build an artistic community. This project has reached over 300 participants in the Chicago area through our weekly workshops, participation in, participation in Chicago's annual integrated dance concert counterbalance, and a workshop held at the Art Institute's open house. We were able to create connections between Access Living and the Chicago disability community as we held guest workshops with organizations like Keen Chicago, Gateway to Learning, Able Ensemble, and the Epilepsy Foundation. After the fall series of workshops, 83% of participants said they would feel comfortable taking dance classes beyond our own workshops, and 66% said they feel a part of the disability community. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have moved our classes online to continue offering opportunities for movement and connection to our community. We are excited to continue our partnership with Access Living, and they have already agreed to continue to donate space through 2020. For both of us, the fellowship has offered an opportunity to bring dance to the disability community. After teaching guest workshops at the organizations mentioned by Maggie, we have learned that they have reached out to other dance teachers and are including dance in their regular programming. Being in the fellowship also introduced a new reflective component to our pedagogical practice. Maggie and I not only touch base after each class, but the monthly reports enable us to think about how we can best meet the physical and emotional needs of the community. This generally results in shifting our lesson plans, reaching out to individual dancers, and focusing questions during discussions to target the community's needs highlighted in the surveys. The monthly lectures provided to the fellows from various public health educators provided us new insight into the unique causes of health disparities in Chicago. One moment that has really stuck with us uh, was a moment during our weekly reflection where one of our participants shared that they were nervous to go back to their regular dance classes after having experienced a workshop where their own body was centered. We talked a bit about how affirming disability centered spaces are, but how it can be hard to leave them and go back into the rest of the world. It felt like a really wonderful moment where the dancer felt comfortable enough to share some of their anxieties about their work and the outside dance world and provided us an opportunity to affirm those feelings and work through some of them together. Maggie and I want to thank all of the staff at Access Living who supported us on a weekly basis, technically and physically. We'd also want to thank LaDonna Friedheim for helping coordinate accommodations and space at Access Living. We'd also like to thank our mentor, Ginger Lane, for her role in building the Disability and Arts and Culture Project and for making space and giving time to emerging artists in disability and dance. We'd also like to thank Carrie Sandall, our academic mentor, for guiding our understanding of disability culture in the art world and all of the staff at, Access, at the Schweitzer Fellowship who believed in our project and offered support and feedback. And finally, we'd like to thank the inclusive dance community for being a part of our journey. Hi, I'm a 2019-2020 Chicago Area Schweitzer Fellow. Uh, my initiative was in the Polish American community in Chicago and my site was the Chicago Department of Public Health Vaccine Division. My initiative initially started out as a HP vaccination initiative and my goal is to talk to the parents of 8 to 12 year old children to get them vaccinated. I even had a physician who was willing to vaccinate children for little to no cost. However, I underestimated how conservative my community was. I wasn't able to get out there. I had the director of a Polish school approach me and she invited me to speak to her entire high school class of 60 students. She strongly believed in adolescence autonomy and, and 
how important it was to, for them to be educated about their own health. And that's how I started speaking to adolescents. However, um, even though teachers raved about my talk, I wasn't able to go to any other Polish schools. No one else wanted me because they were afraid I'd make their teens promiscuous. So I had to completely rethink my initiative and reframe it. At its core, this was a cancer prevention initiative. So I, I made it one uh, through education. I still spoke about HPV and vaccination just to a lesser extent and included other topics that were relevant for our youth. And schools started calling me. I traveled all around Chicagoland with my little lunchbox projector in tow, and I had so many amazing discussions with, with our adolescents, our youth. Uh, during some, we even cried. And I was just so inspired by, by our teens and how amazing and resilient they are and how positive they are. And I was inspired by the, the sense of community that surrounds these small little polar Saturday schools and by the teachers who volunteer their time every Saturday to pass on our culture and traditions to, to, our, to the next generation. Um, by the end of my project, I had led preventive health discussions with over 230 adolescents uh, with over 35 elderly um, adults, elderly caregivers, and promoted health through Polish folk dance of over 90 children. For me, Schweitzer is just the beginning. I'm leaving the rest of my life to be my argument. everyone. As you all know, my name is Ren and I'm a third year dental student at the University of Illinois at Chicago College of Dentistry. Over the past 10 months, I had the pleasure of working with Project Vision and the Asian Health Coalition to create Project Pathways, also known as Mental Health Matters. We designed Project Pathways to benefit Chinese American young adults in the Chicagoland area, focusing on addressing current issues such as immigration experiences, cultural stigmas, and being the model minority, to name a few. With the help of volunteers from the Loyola School of Medicine and licensed health professionals, we held seminars where we introduced students to various health issues and implications in the community. We also allowed the students to engage in discussion and activities to encourage active learning and participation. Through the activities, we were able to see that all of us shared many of the same experiences, no matter our background. Since many of the students were upperclassmen, we also incorporated a component of career development. One thing I learned from this project was that many students were completely unaware of the majority of majors offered in universities beside the STEM field, likely due to parental influence. So I tailored a custom career exploration package for each student based on a survey of their interests, explaining possible majors of interest, potential careers, and ways to connect the student with a professional or student currently in the field. This was something that helped me immensely choose my career and I want to ensure that my students were able to get the same experience. And I wanted to encourage them to think beyond the stereotypical careers for Asian Americans. The final component of Project Pathways is for the students to create a project of their choosing addressing the mental health issues we discussed. They chose to create a social media page with regular posts promoting mental health awareness and resources. That will also feature students and professionals in various fields to provide a short personal video on how mental health affects them and what they do to address it. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with both students and the dedicated volunteers. Project Pathways will continue next year, and I plan on assisting as much as I can. In this past year, I also enjoyed the new friendships I made with members of the fellowship, and I always look forward to being inspired and fed at the monthly meetings whenever I felt burnt out and exhausted. I hope we will all continue to motivate each other to create change, and thank you for this experience. Thank you, Ren, and thank you to all the fellows who have shared so far. We now are going to pause for a moment to acknowledge our funders. This program is supported by local foundations, academic institutions, and individual donors. Now, more than ever in this scary public health moment, we rely on our support to sustain our capacity to nourish these health professionals as they develop into the leaders of their fields and um, our care systems. So to our funders, we say a giant thank you. Um, and it's also my pleasure to have the opportunity to um, 
introduce Robert D. Leonardi. He will be our next speaker. He's the executive director of the VNA Foundation. VNA Foundation is a longtime supporter of the Schweitzer Fellowship um, and an organization that really deeply shares our ethos and um, our values as a program and is deeply committed to the work that you are doing as fellows. Hello and greetings, Schweitzer Fellows and others. Hello and greetings, Schweitzer Fellows and others. It's a pleasure to be here, if only on videotape. Oh boy, that really dates me, doesn't me? Whatever the correct digital age expression is. Um, very disappointed, I have to admit, uh, among the many other, many, many other disappointments, large and small, I am sad that the Schweitzer Fellows event is virtual this year. Um, I am Rob DeLeonardi. I am executive director of the VNA Foundation in Chicago, and we are a private independent foundation that has been a longtime funder of the Schweitzer Fellows program. Um, I did a quick look up for beginning to tape this. And I apologize in advance. I already hear people moving. This is, <laughs> this is the one corner of my my house that was temporarily free of pets and people, and I'm sure that's not going to last for the duration. Um, we've been a longtime funder of the Schweitzer Fellows Program. Uh, if my math was right, uh, adding up the grants over the years, we're at um, $928,000 going back to 1998. Um, VNA Foundation has only been around as a foundation since 1996. So we are an early supporter of the Schweitzer Fellows Program and are proud to continue that support pretty much every single year through this year. <clears throat> Let me explain to you a little bit why the Schweitzer Fellows are so important to us. VNA Foundation is the successor organization to the old Visiting Nurse Association of Chicago, which was founded back in 1890 by Jane Addams and many other really pioneering and creative and determined women at a time when it was pretty unusual for women to have um, community-minded organizations of their own and when they did for those organizations to be impactful one, helping fellow Chicagoans in need. So the Visiting Nurse Association of Chicago lasted 105 years to 1995. And in the mid nineties, there were lots of changes in Medicare and insurance um, reimbursements and um, and some of the other traditional revenue streams that the association relied upon to be able to do its business while also never refusing service to anyone. So they made the decision at that time to transfer all their existing contracts to another entity and create this grant making foundation with the, um, the endowment and assets of the association. Thus was born the VNA foundation and, um, the foundation was very determined to maintain sort of the original work and spirit and mission of Jane Addams and those wonderful ladies who had started the Visiting Nurse Association. So we fund only health and community-based healthcare services for those who otherwise could not access them. So in the case of the case of the Schweitzer Fellows Program, we fund several nursing, the cost of several nurse fellowships each year. But it has been just a delight to see the Schweitzer Fellows Program go, grow over time and include other disciplines. Maybe as the nurse representative tonight, I shouldn't say that, but it has been. Um, nurses, medical students, um, some of the other early fellows um, are sort of to be assumed, but it's been wonderful to see the program broaden out into related disciplines as well. Because if we've all learned nothing over the years is that the benefits of an integrated approach to community-based problems in general and health-related problems in particular uh, are among the most beneficial ways to approach it. So um, it's been a real pleasure to see the program grow over the years. And I might say especially a, a pleasure to think that we are supporting the Schweitzer Fellows Program during this extremely challenging time that we all find ourselves in. Every day the news is sort of overwhelming, um, just in a general sense. And as a healthcare funder, 
uh, VNA Foundation has been involved in several um, emergency response grants, collaborative grants, and the, the COVID-19 Chicago Response Fund, and it's it's all sort of overwhelming. But at the end of the day, what it all boils down to is people pulling together and working together. And the Fellows Program uh, is a perfect example of that. The community-based projects, the work that is done, and the, I guess, sort of the entry point that it provides for many fellows. I have to tell you that I've been at this job a long time and in this, this career almost my entire professional life, and I'm not sure there's anything more gratifying to me than going on a site visit at a free clinic or an FQHC or a community-based clinic and seeing a nurse there or a doctor there who I remember um, meeting as a Schweitzer fellow. The idea that some of you wonderful young people will be, um, boy, I sound really old now, wonderful young people <laughs> will be exposed to working with underserved populations and then make that um, a career choice is just extra heartening and extra impactful. Um, to us as a grant maker. So congratulations to all of you. i very sorry I, I don't have the opportunity to meet you and thank you all in person, but regardless of the discipline, regardless of, of what brought you to this point, thank you for your work. And here's to um, a wonderful year, even under these difficult circumstances. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rob. Um, so so deeply touching to hear Rob's words and reflections, and particularly as, as Rob said in this time, um, this fellowship and our experience working together is really going to inform the future. We're able to continue to pull together, to work interdisciplinarily, and to face these problems um, as a unified public health front. Um, we have another group of fellows to hear from, but first we're going to go through a few delightful photos from the year's fellowship. Um, it's hard, or rather it's easy to get sort of lost in this moment and feel really down um, and upset, but really we've had a beautiful year and we'll get back to this kind of work soon. In the meantime, we're all doing our part to try the impacts um, of the COVID virus. Um, this is a, a look back at some of the photos from the year. My name is Fadi Hamati, and I'm a second year medical student at Rush Medical College. Over the past year, I've worked with the Syrian Community Network on mentoring young refugees in the Chicagoland. My project was not seamless, and it definitely had its fair share of hiccups. But I managed to provide some of the students with a space to grow and learn both academically and personally. Working with each student was challenging, and it was also incredibly rewarding. The relationships I developed with my mentees allowed them to reach out with anything that they felt they couldn't face alone. For instance, one of the individuals I was working with expressed feelings of sadness, and from the little information that I can remember from my psych block, his symptoms checked out, classic depression. He hadn't spoken to anyone about it before, so after several phone conversations and meetings in person, he was able to come around and see a therapist about his situation. This is exactly what I wanted for my mentees. Whether or not this intervention worked is not what matters. It is the idea that they have an avenue and a network of support that they can reach out to when they feel ready. And that is the best that I can do. Finally, and along the same lines, one of the most important lessons that I have learned in this project is that the success of your initiative depends on the willingness of the recipients to accept it. Without the, that acceptance and willingness to work with me, even my best efforts can fall flat. And by identifying those who truly wanted the help, I was able to provide them with precisely 
the support that they needed. I truly enjoyed working with every single one of my students, and I will continue to do so. So I wanted to, sh to thank the Schweitzer Fellowship, its staff, as well as my fellows for continuous support throughout their rewarding journey. See you all on the other side. Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Johnson. I am a nursing student at Rush University for the 2019-2020 Schweitzer Fellowship year. I served at Richard T. Crane Medical Prep High School, which is located on the near west side of Chicago. Um, the goal of my project was to connect minority high school students with minority professionals and college students who could academically, mentally, and socially prepare them for life after high school, whether um, the students plan to go to college or just immediately start a career. Um, while at Crane, I provided um, life skills workshops, an introduction into various careers not exclusive to the medical field and opportunities for the students to participate in social activities as well as community service. Um, I learned so many things from working with my students, but the biggest takeaway was that our youth are more acceptable to information that comes from someone they can relate to. And so myself, along with all of the other minority professionals and college students, really motivated these students to start thinking about going to college and what college they want to go to and what career they would be most passionate about. And so I'm just very grateful to have gained this experience. I really joy, enjoyed um, building relationships with the students and the staff and um, just bringing awareness to the need of exposure to different careers and mental health awareness um, during high school. And so I really enjoy meeting you all and I wish you all the best of luck on all of your future endeavors. Hi, this is Scott Cooperschmidt from Loyola University Chicago's School of Social Work. My Schweitzer Fellowship project took place at the Knight Ministries Transitional Housing Program called STEPS in Noble Square. Over the past year, I taught cooking and life skills to young adults transitioning out of homelessness. I started volunteering at the Knight Ministry before I had heard of the fellowship. The notion of joining a group of other helping professionals who were also volunteering was appealing. I thought I'd find a community of like-minded people with whom I could learn and grow during my second year of grad school. As much as the fellowship was about my project, for me it was also about the monthly meetings and the community of other fellows. There were times when I felt tired and almost resented having to set aside five or six hours each week for volunteering. Then I'd chat with another fellow or attend a monthly meeting and I'd feel reinvigorated, inspired. I honestly doubt I would have stuck with volunteering for as long as I did without being part of the fellowship. As I entered the home stretch of the school year and of the fellowship project, I felt this sense of excitement and relief. Prospective fellows were reaching out, asking me about continuing the project I started. While the notion of ending my work at the Night Ministry makes me sad, I also have my eyes trained on another volunteer opportunity, so the knowledge that the work will continue without me is actually a great comfort. And then COVID-19 came. Suddenly, everything is undone, both in my tiny world and globally. Catastrophic trauma inundates us all. Amidst all this, I realized how important the fellowship is. I foresee a future of care that requires a great deal of leadership and interprofessional collaboration. I think that the fellowship has prepared us well for this moment. We're about to enter as caregivers and hope that we can inspire others to follow the same ideals.
Hello, my name is Stephanie Scott and I'm a graduating student at Erickson Institute. I'll be receiving my master's in social work focused in children's law and policy. My fellowship site was the McGaw YMCA Children's Center in Evanston, Illinois, and I worked mostly with third, fourth, and fifth grade youth. My project focused on youth building community, starting from their classrooms and beginning to expand their awareness to broader social context of their neighborhoods and towns. Youth are not always consulted as stakeholders in their environment, when in reality they are often the ones most impacted by decisions. The goal of the project was to facilitate a space where youth could feel their voices heard and valued as stakeholders in their own communities. Activities aim to nurture a healthy development of personal and community identity. I was also given the opportunity to work with an artist named Juan Carlos Perez and the Youth in the Head Start program to create a mural reflecting their community. I was able to learn more about the youth and what they felt about their environments, as well as learning creative ways to engage youth in exploring their emotions through art. My experience with my fellowship class has been very meaningful to me, especially now in the midst of an unprecedented public health crisis. To be connected with this interdisciplinary group of like-minded professionals has been a comfort and has provided me with much needed hope. I remember listening to Dr. Rothschild at our orientation retreat and feeling a deep sense of our shared mission that will continue to inspire my work throughout my career. As with most important things in life, there were challenges throughout the process, but I did my best to use each challenge as a learning opportunity. Overall, this fellowship year has been an experience that I will always value. I have learned so much about myself as a professional, about youth and the struggles they face, and about how to collaborate across systems to work towards the best outcomes for everyone. These lessons will not soon be forgotten. Thank you. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Rios, a PhD student from the College of Nursing at UIC and a part-time nurse practitioner serving the community of Harvard, Illinois. After serving this community for many years and seeing the high prevalence of diabetes in adult Latinos, I had the desire to do more. The Short Surf Fellowship has allowed me to do just that for the community of Harvard. My project site is St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Harvard, and it has been a blessing as well as a challenge to finally be part of their community and life. After much persistence and patience on my part, the community of St. Joseph's has embraced my service and shown their trust by asking me their personal medical questions. My project focus is to increase awareness on the prevention and complications of chronic illness like diabetes, hypertension, and cancer, which are prevalent in Latinos. Throughout the year, we have had four health fairs, two AED CPR first response classes, nine monthly screenings, various health lectures, and our most attended diabetes of management class in the county. The fellowship has also provided opportunity for family time, which is always a priority in my life. My two oldest children, Maria and Anthony, have also been able to volunteer in my project. They were able to help another community in need and hopefully one day continue the legacy. With their help and so many other volunteers and sponsors, I have had at least 300 encounters throughout the program year. As my fellow project year comes to an end, my final goal is to train a group of women and men to become the promotores or community health volunteers of the parish. They will be the leaders of the health ministry and continue to empower each other and the community. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ryan Mack. I'm a second year medical student at Loyola University of Chicago Strict School of Medicine. And for my Swikers project, I've been working with a team called Boxing Out Negativity, 
in North Lawndale to create fitness training sessions for kids in areas of high gun violence. I've had an amazing time this year as a Selectus Fellow. I've loved working with the kids and leading them through weekly workouts, but I want to highlight two things that really stuck with me from my experience. First is the importance of simply showing up and being present with people. I think I spent a lot of time focusing on creating training sessions and really helping these kids grow as athletes, but what they really valued was simply having a trainer, having a person show up week after week to support them. I remember when I led my Thanksgiving session, uh, we had a workout at the CrossFit gym, had dinner, and we went around and shared what we were most thankful for. And one of the kids said that he was most thankful for the people who actually showed up to their fights rather than the people who said, hey, you guys are doing great things, keep it up. Um, so being present, showing up is a huge thing that I picked up from my time this year. The second thing I want to highlight is the universality or the common humanity that we share with each other. Um, I didn't grow up poor or black on Chicago's west side, but I did grow, grow up around my own troubles and being part of a team, working um, to become a better athlete, training every day was something that was so huge in my own development as a person, uh, creating character and resiliency. And I recognized this year that these kids want the exact same thing. They want to be better, they want to work hard, and they want to transform the lives beyond what society labels them as, beyond their surroundings of violence. And so it was so easy to connect with these kids because I basically felt like I was one of them and we were working towards the same goal together. So I had an amazing, amazing time this year as Fuckus Fellow. I wanna thank all the supporters, all the donors, all the t uh, staff on the Swekas Committee for making this year possible. Thank you. Mentorship is a cornerstone of the Schweitzer Fellowship. We rely on the support, generosity, insight, and knowledge of our academic, site, and student mentors. We could not do this without you. I'd like to recognize all of this year's site mentors. They're listed here, as well as all of this year's academic mentors. And of course, your student mentors who have really helped you get through this year from a peer perspective. Additionally, each year we recognize um, the, su the support of specific mentors to highlight um, who the fellows have really identified as being crucial in specific ways to their programs and to their development. Honor these mentors with the Art Corman Mentorship Award. Art Corman um, is a longtime member of the Health and Medicine Board of Directors and also was the chair of our Schweitzer Fellowship Advisory Council for many years. In that capacity, he was really a tireless and inspiring, inspiring mentor to dozens and dozens of fellows. So the specific uh, Arthur Corman Mentorship Awards this year go to um, Kim Wright, who is the founder and CEO of Master Builders in Motion, also the site mentor for Shirley Scott. Um, that's a photo of them together. Uh, and also Chike's um, site mentor, Dr. Tanya Peyton Campbell from Howard Brown Health. So here's a little something that each of them uh, wrote about their mentors and what that, that mentorship meant to their capacity to grow and develop. Um, but we want to thank those mentors so much, um, as well as our entire broad range of mentors. Now we have the opportunity again to hear from another um, chunk of our fellows. So uh, strap in and get excited about what we're going to hear from, from our next group of fellows. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, everybody. Afternoon. My name is Jake Dockman. I'm a current third-year dental student at the University of Illinois at Chicago College of Dentistry. 
I'd first like to give a special shout out to Dr. Reda, Dr. Marion, and Dr. Dave Fonseca for their unwavering support throughout my fellowship year. My project was based out of UCP Seguin of Greater Chicago. That stands for United Cerebral Palsy Seguin of Greater Chicago. On site, we worked with medically fragile foster children. And what we did was is we provided, well, what started out as providing oral hygiene instructions, um, as well as general oral health information um, for the foster kids, um, turned into some on-site clinic sessions, as well as really all sort of support services to better help the families meet the oral health care needs of their foster child. When an individual has psychomotor issues, it can be extremely difficult to get them to brush their teeth, but when you tack on foster as well, um, and they go through Medicaid, um, it can be incredibly difficult to get a child um, seen at a private office. So what we did was is we worked with a lot of the families to connect them with dentists. Um, we also um, even took some kids into the operating room um, under Dr. Rada's license. It was an incredible experience. Um, it's something that I will really value and treasure for the rest of my life. Um, one really highlight of my fellowship experience was during one of our on-site clinic sessions, a kid had told me, um, that he um, that that he had never been to a dentist. Um, he was in a lot of pain. Um, he would point to his his mouth, but his mother, um, you know, really didn't understand what was going on. Um, and you know, he told he told me, you know, he had never been to a dentist, but that also I was his first friend, and that was something that was extremely touching. Um, it's really why I got into dentistry in the first place. It's to make a difference in in people's lives, and no better way to make a difference in these kids' lives. Um, you know, I, I, I would recommend the fellowship experience to anybody, and it was an incredible experience. It was definitely tough at times, but I'm extremely thankful for it, and I would highly, highly, highly recommend anybody do it. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you all again. Everybody stay safe from the virus, and God bless. Hello, my name is Jennifer Cunningham and I'm a graduate student at the University of Illinois at Chicago in the School of Public Health. As a white fellow, I partnered with Heartland Alliance. They are a refugee resettlement organization that works to provide essential services for refugees. My project was a literacy project that also incorporated physical activity um, and my population were um, two to five year old refugees. This entire process was really incredible. I was able to um, create lesson plans and see in real time um, how impactful the project was. The children um, changed throughout the process. They were more engaged over time. I saw behavioral changes and I did see an increase in, in their level of engagement toward literacy. So I'm very thankful for this project, for this fellowship. I'm thankful for my host site for guiding me as I had to write and rewrite lesson plans to tailor to the needs of the students. Um, I learned that I am capable of Change. I had to adapt a lot, roll with the boulders, and I really saw that I can be patient because when things don't always go according to plan, you have to just deal with it. So I did. And um, again, thank you to the Spartan Fellowship. This was an incredible, amazing experience. Hi everyone, my name is Itzel Lopez Hinojosa. I'm a second year medical student at the University of Chicago, Pritchard School of Medicine. And this year I worked in partnership with an organization in back of the yards called Holy Cross Immaculate Heart of Mary. My project was um, split into two different parts. The first part was 
was focusing more over the summer and trying to teach and educate um, fourth graders about health and nutrition, including exercise. And the second part was developing a curriculum for a mentorship program for young women um, in the community. And there's a lot of lessons that I've kind of learned along the way that I kind of like to t share right now. Um, first of all, working with such a young cohort, um, you know, nine and 10 years old, really taught me uh, the importance of being flexible. Um, I think that oftentimes I would walk in during these summer hours with a whole curriculum planned, um, spent hours developing, and then quickly realized that um, these are kids, right? They're children, it's the middle of the summer, and they wanna have fun. As much as I want them to learn, they wanna have fun. And so um, it was really impactful to just kind of push myself out of my own comfort zone and learn how to make things be simple and concrete and kind of meet my goals but also be incredibly fun. Um, the other big lesson that I learned is the importance of building trust and establishing vulnerability. I think specifically with the young women I kind of had a hard time um, feeling like I was someone that they wanted to talk to um, and also someone that kind of belonged in that space um, especially because these young women have very different lives than me um, and many of them didn't even want to speak to me at first, but towards the end, on my last day, a couple of them went specifically looking for me so they could say goodbye. And so that made me realize how much just being present every day really helps establish that trust and community. Hello, my name is Chige Ibuna. I'm a fourth year pharmacy student at Chicago State College of Pharmacy. And this year, I have the ability to partner with Alan Brown Health to work on my project called Affirm. Affirm is a project based on patients who are HIV positive, who are non inherent to their medication. And Affirm addresses social determinants to their health. This year's experience at Harold Brown Health has been very rewarding. I had an opportunity to change many of my patients' lives. I enrolled them in programs for school, housing, and I had the ability to even help patients find jobs. Um, the only thing I can say about this project is that it really changed my idea of what HIV was, and I got to learn a lot about the individuals around me especially here in Chicago. Um, as you know, Englewood is one of one portion of Chicago that has a very high volume of HIV patients, and so is South Shore. A lot of my patients um, deal with the stigma of HIV. A lot of them were not able to come to a, a place where they could speak with individuals. Um, they just carry that burden around and have the opportunity to allow these patients to open up and speak freely with me. I would say that this project has changed me and allowed me to see, you know, individuals from all walks of life and, and how they're affected by HIV, but also um, it educated me on, you know, how to treat these individuals as far as regards to their medication and just, you know, barriers to their health. So I just want to say thank you for the experience, uh, Schweitzer. My name is Jessica Rodriguez and I'm finishing up my doctorate in physical therapy at Northwestern University. This year, for my Schweitzer Fellowship project, I was able to partner with the Center on Halstead, which is a local center in Chicago that services the LGBT population. Specifically, I worked with the youth program that services youth ages 13 to 24, most of which are experiencing homelessness. The, the youth are able to come to youth program every weeknight and get a free meal, have a safe place to be inside where they feel accepted and safe and then also are able to do workshop programming. 
it. So I hosted physical health workshops that focused on how to make your body feel physically better and how to move differently to help prevent some normal aches and pains that you might get. This population is already highly stressed and high psychosocial stress often causes high physical pain. So I was able to help them in that way. I had some really fun and interesting experiences with these youth. Um, also quite challenging. At first I really went into it focusing on a didactic lecture written education and learned that I really had to change that for this community that isn't good in these seated, seated structured activities. So we changed it to more discussion based where people got to tell what they knew already about their bodies and share with each other and help each other learn how we can make ourselves feel better. We also were able to do some gender affirming content such as when a youth asked, okay, how can I wear these shoes that make me feel affirmed in my gender, but they also hurt my feet. What are things I can do about that? Um, I had a really great experience, made some really important connections with the youth, and I know they specifically told me that they learned a lot and really enjoyed the workshops every week. So I was grateful to be able to have this opportunity to um, work with this population through this venture fellowship. Chris Chan and I am a second year medical student at Rush Medical College and throughout this past year I've been working on um, a project that helps address the lack of consistent athletic trainers available to majority of Chicago public high schools. Um, I developed a curriculum um, that's divided into six different sessions that each focuses on a different healthcare topic like diet and hydration, concussions, and since the beginning of this school year, I've been administering that to various sports teams at Crane High School on the west side of Chicago. And one of the things that I learned most um, and have been reminded of most throughout this year is how important it is, how significant it is to just be present for the students. Um, as much positive feedback as they shared about playing the games um, for the sessions, learning about the topics, to me, the most memorable moments, the most meaningful moments and memories to me were the conversations that I shared with the students about um, college and their aspirations for the future and what they can do to become not only a better player, but a better person. And it started off with just seeing me there, becoming more familiar with me, talking about sports, something that we had a common interest in, and it grew into much more in-depth conversations. And I truly do believe that had a lot to do with just being there for them um, during their practices, during their games, um, in addition to administering the sessions for them. Um, and I am really grateful for the opportunity to have been able to work on this project and for all of the support that I received from the Schweitzer Fellowship. So thank you. At this point, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our Chicago area Schweitzer Fellowship Advisory Council. These dedicated members of our Schweitzer family support the program through their tireless dedication, commitment to our sustainability, and real investment in the great work of our fellows. Thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge our board of directors at Health and Medicine Policy Research Group, as they support everything that we do with great wisdom and vision. Thank you for continuing to bear with us. It's now time for our last, but certainly not least, um, group of fellows to share their experiences and their fellowship projects with us. Hi, my name is Amy 
Alyssa Bustamante. I attend University of Illinois at Chicago. I am studying social work and my project focused on mental health among the Latino Latina population. With my background working with children, I decided that I wanted to focus my project working with adolescents. And so I completed my project at UIC College Prep in Polson, Chicago, um, where I implemented a Latinx student union. Our group focused on exploring different aspects of um, the Latino culture, but also being able to teach the students about healthy social skills, emotional awareness, and how to build confidence in their identities as well as history. The Schweitzer Fellowship was really key in helping me build a very strong foundation for my project um, and to ensure that it was gonna be successful from the mentors to the resources and the ongoing workshops. They were always there to answer any of your questions. They were there to provide you guidance into the next steps and they always motivated you into attaining all the ideas that you had. And so I really do thank the Schweitzer for this opportunity and for the skills that they have taught me into entering a community and being able to build rapport. Um, I know for my students, it was super important that they are able to identify their strengths um, and use those strengths to face that Universities. And with the rapport that I've built with them, I look forward to seeing them enter the next phases in their lives and grow more confident with who they are and use that to succeed after high school, you know, in college and in life, um, as well as just being able to connect with the school's network and really talk about meeting the students halfway that, you know, although academic excellence is what we should strive for and teach them that we also make sure that our students are mentally well and that they are prepared for the feelings and um, the experiences that they, they are going to experience after high school. Hi, my name is Sarah Lasme, and I'm a third year pharmacy student at UIC College of Pharmacy. I moved from Syria to the United States six years ago. That is why I chose a Syrian community network for my project, so I can help newcomers the same way I was uh, fortunate to be helped. The Syrian community network is a great organization that supports refugees and immigrants. My project involved uh, supporting the elderly clients by implementing uh, health-related workshops, medication uh, counseling, and some social events. It also involved participating in the after-school program and providing academic support and mentorship to the students. One important thing I learned in my fellowship is the diversity of immigrants and refugees. On the surface, the clients and I uh, seemed like we have a lot in common. We both came from Syria and we both speak the same language. However, every individual I worked with had their own unique story with their own challenges and obstacles to overcome. Uh, often newcomers to the US are grouped together as immigrants or refugees. However, each person, a specific situation should be considered and we should not make assumptions of what we think their needs are. I learned that access to healthcare and treatment is not the only determinant of patient's health. All my clients had health insurance and were able to obtain the treatment for all their conditions. However, a major need of the elders was more opportunities to get out of the house and see other people. I was able to tailor my project to meet this need for my group and I tried my best to listen to their suggestions and feedback. One of my favorite moments during this fellowship was one of the elders told me that she learned how to take the bus by herself so she doesn't miss any of uh, the sessions we have. I am very grateful to have had the opportunity to be part of the Schweitzer Fellowship. The support that was provided to me has been invaluable. Also, I enjoyed being able to work alongside a diverse group of co-fellows uh, with each of them having a unique area of expertise. This was a great opportunity for me to learn how to effectively incorporate service in my life. I hope to be able to continue to serve the community. And thank you so much for listening to, to my experience.
Hello, my name is Shirley Scott, and I'm currently enrolled in the University of Illinois College of Nursing. Upon completion, I will be eligible to sit for the Women's Health Nurse Practitioner exam and will hold a doctorate in nursing. I partnered with Young Master Builders in Motions, whose mission is to inspire, connect, and empower youth, young adults, mature adults, veterans, and families to thrive. Their aim is to provide a holistic approach to mentoring and leadership development which is delivered through workshops, life enrichment retreats, and international mission experiences. My community education projects were conducted at two sites, Simpson Academy for Young Women, where I engage young mothers to discuss their ideas on parenting, self-esteem, safety tips, and living a healthy lifestyle, and Ebenezer Prim Towers Senior Citizen Apartments, where mature adults engaged in discussions about sexual health, relationships, and a variety of ways to express their sexuality. This program was based on our whole lives curriculum. Some things that I learned throughout this fellowship was patience, especially when there is a strike going on with the Chicago Public School District. Planning, also is very important, but flexibility is the key. And lastly, accept people where they are and they will grow leaps and bounds when they are ready. Some comments from the Simpson Academy young ladies were, I love the jokes at the beginning of each session. Thanks for teaching me how to break up my boyfriend. And I know now that I'm important. Ebenezer Print Tower Senior stated, now I know all the correct names for the male and female body parts and sharing with my peers made this class invaluable. This was a very exciting and experience for me because I learned a lot about program development, planning, and implementation while working with the Young Master Builders volunteers. I know I grew as much as the individuals did at my sites. Shirley and congratulations to everyone and thank you to all of you for sharing your experiences and your projects. You join a cadre of ambitious, dedicated change agents who care deeply for our world and are willing to work hard to change it for the better. You join over 4,000 Felons for Life around the nation, professionals in dozens of fields, leading in their disciplines, working tirelessly to make a better world possible. We are excited to see where you go. Thank you. 